Welcome to Masters of the Craft. I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy, and we're going to look at one of my favorite photographers, and we're going to go back in history. And so the Masters of the Craft, I want to uh, look at a lot of the photographers from the past, but we may cover some current photographers too. I want to try to do this, oh, we're going to do one on uh, Irving Penn, um, Henry Carter Besson, um, trying to think of some of the masters that I've had that kind of influenced my, you know, kind of my thinking and my career or whatever. Uh, but Ansel Adams is one of my favorites of all time. And when I was in college, I did all landscapes. So long before I was doing portraits, I was heavily influenced by Ansel Adams. And so you, I'm sure you know Ansel Adams. You may know that name. He's probably, probably the most famous photographer that's ever lived. And he got on the cover of Time Magazine, I think, in oh, around the 1980s or something like that, and that put him on a, kind of a the world the world kind of a stage. And but what what made Ansel Adams so special, and and how did he influence me? So let's talk a little bit about that. So as I was you know starting out as a landscape photographer, um, the idea of using a view camera and uh, dark cloth, you know, focusing glass and shooting sheet film. I mean, I thought that was the coolest thing on the planet. And so, of course, you know, he was uh, a large format guy for the most of his. He did medium format toward the end of his career, but um, but uh, uh, that just really, really, I thought that was the coolest thing. And I still think it's kind of a fun process to have a big view camera go through all the steps. Very slow process. Um, but what made Ansel Adams special was um, well, first of all. Um, he started out as a concert pianist, so, and I say this a lot about, uh, I used to play, I used to, I still play the guitar, but I used to play a lot and write music and sing and was in a band and all that stuff, and so music and, and, and photography or being an artist, uh, they, those, there's a lot of photographers I know that were and still musicians, and so um, I think maybe it's just that part of the brain, I don't know. But Ansel was kind of unique in that he had both a very technical approach and scientific and dedicated, you know, to his craft. But he was also had the artistic side. So I think he was in uh, sort of that camp of both. Uh, and and I always say that if you can be in both camps, you're probably best off. I think most of us tend to fall into maybe the, the technical side, uh, more engineer minded, and then some of us are more artistic minded. So, but if you have a kind of a, uh, a blend between the two, I think it's a great a great place to be. I think you can always take your weakness, which is, you know, let's say if you're very engineer minded, you can go and push the artistic side, elevate that, and then of course you have all the techniques down, and that helps. Um, if you're very artistic, and you say, my craft's a little bit on the weak side, get out and learn it. And there's so many resources today that allow you to do that. So, Ansel Adams, um, he, uh, I th believe he started out with wet plates. So then, uh, eventually you had the uh, gelatin film based, uh, or a film that you could put in holders. And, um, but what Ansel did was he took the technical side and he came up with what we call, or he called, the zone system. And what that was, of course, working in black and white, is uh, being able to get a negative that had the ability to have detail in the highlights and detail in the shadows and all the tones in between. So it was this very systematic uh, um, sort of, I think we say complex approach to the taking the picture. So you would have your meter and you would meter in certain a certain way to get your negative so that then you process it and you could either push it or pull the time uh, to either get more more contrast or less contrast uh, in your negative and expand your your tones or contract them so on a say a very contrasty day like in the desert that you take a picture and expose for the highlights and your shadows are gone they're all black and so what Ansel did was expose for the shadows and then you would pull back the highlights and processing. If it was a very contra or a very soft day, overcast day, you have a f kind of a flat negative and then you would expand your processing and it would in build the contrast and get a negative that had <clears throat> kind of a, a real, you can see his work, very punchy look to it. 
So Ansel would be uh, would probably be the first to say and uh, create this sort of system that was something he could pass on. So he was a very good teacher. And so he taught um, and he promoted his work and promoted his teaching and uh, became very well known in the, in the photo community. And he wrote three books that I think became sort of, we call them the Bible of you know photography. And it was called The Camera, The Negative, and The Print. And I had those for years and I don't know what happened to them, but um, they were always on my bookshelf. And of course now we're in digital age, but uh, it doesn't hurt to go back and read that and see his perspective. And he talks a lot about the, the vision of a, a photographer, why you would do certain things. And so and when I talk about, uh, in, in the Joel Grimes Academy, I mean, as I teach, I always say the how is not as important as the why. Now, I love the how. I love, okay, how did you do that? You know, but the why, that's important. And so Ansel talked a lot about the why, and, um, but he was also a, an amazing uh, technician and scientist in a way and experimented and came up with some incredible uh, techniques. And of course his pictures reflect that. Now, um, he would be called the grand, the big la grand landscape. Now he did some uh, detailed stuff too, but he would be more the grand landscape. And that's what I was drawn to as a young photographer, the big epic pictures. And he used filters on his cameras and he talks all about that and how he did that and you know probably already as if you're in photography at all that if you take in black and white film now we're shooting usually uh, well digital and so it's a little bit different but pretty much similar similar principles when you go into processing and that is um, he would uh, on a blue sky if you take a yellow filter that would darken the sky just a little bit an orange filter would give it a pretty good dark you know value and a red filter would make it almost black and he loved that, that black sky, the black and the clouds would pop. And so um, that's what was sort of, maybe what I would say, one of his hallmark looks was the black sky. And um, of course, um, we can look at some of his images here. Um, I think I would probably see if I can find the moonrise over Hernandez. Let's see if that comes up here. Oh, that's a small one. Let's see if it pops up any bigger. Um, that is probably his fam most famous picture. And he tells the whole story about that. It's pretty unique how he uh, didn't even, he couldn't find his meter, so he remembered the basic Sunny 16 rule, which um, he worked off the moon and exposed for that based on uh, kind of a guesswork, but knowing, I say guess, but knowing his craft. And um, he shot this with an 8x10 camera, and of course I think there was a, a film that was done where they zoomed in, and you can see almost the on the gravestones there, um, the names. It was such amazing detail. Uh, that's one of his most famous shots. Um, you look at, um, let's see, here's another one I like a lot, and this is in um, Arkansas uh, Hills, in the Owens Valley in uh, California. And so if you're going up from um, the LA Basin or, or San Bernardino, you take the 15 up and you cut over and you go up Owens Valley, uh, there's the Alabama Hills. A lot of movies uh, set, uh, people, uh, they have the movies there and stuff, and you can go there and roam the rocks. It's just absolutely one of those magical places. That's a picture I remember as a young photographer going, wow. And um, so let's look at some other images. He had stuff of Santa Fe walls and um, here's the, uh, I think this is in Alaska. What does it say here? Well, Sierra Nevadas. Oh, it says Owens Valley too. So if you go in the Owens Valley, you have uh, snow-capped mountains on one side, snow-capped mountains on the other, and you're kind of in the valley and it's just during a certain times of year you get, mm, it still might be a little cold in the valley, but you get these snow-capped mountains. Mount Whitney's up there and it's spectacular. Yosemite was, of course, probably his most uh, photographed uh, uh, space, and he had a, a gallery there, the, uh, Ansel Adams, you could take workshops when he was alive there. I think they still have some type of workshops there, but Yosemite, if you haven't been, is one of those magical places too. Now, it gets a lot more crowded these days than when he was there, um, but he's got a lot of pictures of Yosemite, um, and some of these are cropped in a little bit, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, here's one with the moon. Um, let's see if we can find one that's got the really dark skies to give you an idea 
um, of that technique that he used here. I'm just kind of scrolling through. More snow in Yosemite. Here's the Snake River uh, with the Grand Tetons in the back. Um, and I've been to that point. And of course, again, there's about 40 photographers taking pictures as I'm standing there. So it's one of those places that, that has been photographed a lot. Almost all of Ansel Adams' play, uh, iconic images have been hit uh, a million, if not more times. Here's another one, Yosemite. Um, so very contrasty, very uh, uh, bold uh, um, images. I'll probably can talk all day on this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of give you just a little bit of insight why I think um, he, I was drawn to Ansel Adams' pictures and um, how it's influenced me today. Uh, number one, Ansel talks about this in his book, I don't remember which book, but one of the books, The Camera, The Negative, The Print, that he is, did not consider some, himself as a purist, you know, going out and saying, okay, I'm just gonna take a picture, that's the picture I get, you, you know, you don't manipulate it much and you, you know, show people. He uh, very much manipulated his images and he built drama. And of course it's black and white, so that's not reality. And even color today, if you shoot a color picture, it's not reality, it's a representation of reality. I go through all that in my, the artist side of my um, Joel Grimes Academy. But I was drawn by the drama and the, what I would call fantasy-ish feel of his images. So it's a world I don't see every day. So if you look at my images, and I talk about this a lot, and someone says to me, well, that's not a very real, uh, you know, realistic picture. I go, thank you. And they're like, well, trying to maybe, you know, cut me down a little bit and, and uh, critique me in a way that, you know, they're maybe a negative side. And I'm saying thank you because my goal is to build drama. My go goal is to create an image that you don't see every day. And um, I think that's been my success. So even though I started out in landscapes and I shoot portraits today, I think he influenced me in that to build drama, to make something larger than life. So when I photograph a person, I say to them, look, my goal is to make a picture that is, number one, the best picture that's ever been taken of you. I mean, it may not happen, but my goal is to do that. And one that you say, I want to hang on, my, on your wall and I want to hang it on my wall. And one that someone says, wow. Yeah, you're, you're a good looking person or be beautiful person, um, a beautiful model or whatever, and I make you look even more beautiful. Or you're an athlete, you look even more superhero. Um, so that's my goal. So I think I probably was heavily influenced by Ansel Adams um, with, with that. And um, even though I would probably fall perfectly in between the artist and the technician, no I don't. I, I think that um, having learned the zone system, which I used to say when I started out, I had hair. I studied the zone system for probably 10 years. And um, it was difficult because it was very meticulous. And I think that in using the large format camera helped me with my skill sets today, learning the craft. So when I talk about lenses, people go, how do you know that? Well, I had to learn that with the four by five and the view cameras. Um, when I talk about certain things, tonal range and getting if you look at my black and whites there's that tonal range that beautiful rendition of tones um, and people say where'd you learn that well that was probably uh, those days of learning uh, and studying landscape photography and the zone system black and white and all that so um, again a huge influence on me and how I think today and so I will tell you this you may be a young photographer uh, or new to photography and you may um, um, you say, I don't have much interest in history. And I've, I've talked to people that say, I've never heard of this photographer or whatever. I would look, look go back to the masters, look at them. And um, you have to also think about, we have tools today they wouldn't even dream of. And I was talking about Edward Weston when he was at Point Lobos photographing, um, well now they've named it Weston Point, but um, it's the seashore with the big rocks and whole, uh, kind of worn out uh, patterns in the rocks. And I was photographing there and I was looking kind of, you know, I had this tilt shift lens shifting up normal and then down getting a, well, about 11 millimeter perspective. I say 11 on a 35 millimeter uh, camera, but that would be an angle of degrees, well over 100 degrees of angle. And so they didn't have cameras that did that. Um, uh, not an eight by 10, especially. And so we have those uh, 
those lenses today that we can go and do stuff that they couldn't even dream of. And so, but when you see what they did at the time period that they had, working with under conditions, and even the roads that we can get to some of these parks and stuff, back then they were dirt roads and, you know, probably certain times of the year you couldn't get back to. So um, it was a tough time for them to create images and we have it today pretty darn good. So um, it helps you kind of think about, um, um, you know, uh, the, how difficult and how amazing some of these photographers were. So look at Ansel Adams, look at his work, even though you may not photograph uh, uh, landscapes, but it will influence you in a way that maybe will help you with what you do today. And so study the masters and you will uh, grow from that and benefit. As you forge new ground, you will say, hmm, that's been done, but you know what? Hmm, I'm gonna do a little different. Or you might be inspired by something that's been done before you and it'll spark something and you can go and create your own twist to it and that's what it's all about being an artist so with that master of the craft uh, Ansel Adams uh, next I hope we will do Irving Irving Penn probably the most influential influential I can even talk today uh, photographer and the portrait side for me so we'll do that next so I uh, hope you enjoyed this